Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good day. Whatever time it is where you are, I hope you're having a lovely day. Welcome to the Mystic Worlds YouTube channel. I'm Salation Ali, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you people how to import your content to Chill Out VR with the least amount of stress and confusion as I can give you. This is going to be straight into the point. I'm going to basically just do everything as you need to. You can follow along perfectly, slow down the video if you wish, but I just want to get this thing over with quickly because I'm not very well right now. I'm kind of struggling to speak without having uh, a coughing fit, so let's see uh, how far I can get this time. Um, anyway, without any random delays about real life, let's get into the tutorial really quickly. So first of all, you're going to need Unity 2021.3.23 F1. It's the version Chillout VR currently uses. You can get it by going to the description. I've got a link to this site here, the documentation, where you have the access of download link to the CCK, and also Unity. I would choose using, uh, using Unity Hub because the executable is a completely different process and having Unity Hub is just better in general when you can uh, have multiple Unity installations. It's easier to mix and match them together. So I'm going to be using Unity Hub. So in Unity Hub, when you do have Unity 2021 installed, you want to create a new project, name it literally anything you want. I've just named it j uh, Jumble of Letters because I don't actually need to make a project. Uh, it's in my Unity project folder. This can be anywhere. I'd personally just put that somewhere where you know where your, all your projects are going to be. And then if you have the Unity Cloud stuff, which I have enabled from my time in VRChat back in the day, about over two years ago now, you want to disable this because it will cause issues of it spamming something in your console and you can't do anything about it and it will just drown out any actual errors and generally I don't really like that. Uh, most people wouldn't anyway. So once you've created a brand new project, it should be empty like this. It may have nothing in your assets folder, it may have this file. I don't actually know what this was for. It's probably because I've imported stuff previously, but that's fine in this case. Then once you've got the CCK installed like I have here, you've got your avatar, a shader to work with, in this case I'm using Poyomi Pro, and a dynamic bone system, I'm using Magical Cloth 2. I've got it bundled here just to make life easier for me in the tutorial, but you will have to get this from the Unity Asset Store. It costs real money, but it's the best dynamic bone script that Chill Out VR has. There is an older version that is cheaper, that's Magicka Cloth 1, but it requires an external script, so I would severely recommend using Magicka 2 over alternative scripts when you have chance. Once you have the CCK though, you want to drag this into Unity and wait a little bit. I'm going to skip this mo moment real quick and go to the import part because otherwise it's just a waste of time. So I will see you once this is ready to import. Once your script has imported like it is here, you'll see this pop-up. This right here is your importing uh, pop-up. It'll show you everything that's in the package. In this case, everything is new, but if you are importing into an existing project, which I wouldn't recommend, it may have things that will be overwritten, but in this case, this is fine, and I'm just going to import this as normal. This will take time again, so I will just skip ahead again, but it depends on your hardware, so it may take a while, or it may take a few seconds. Okay, the CCK has now finally been imported for me, and I have a few things in my console. If you have these types of errors here, this is fine. You can go without like having to deal with these. If you have anything else, then there may be a problem. In this case, this thing here is mentioning something about plastic SCM, but that's fine. This is not related to the uh, error I was mentioning earlier. That would be something like Unity Collaboration Services has been replaced with plastic SCM, etc. But generally though, this is fine for what you'd expect with an import. If you are worried though that you have imported something incorrectly, you can just go to the play mode section. I'm just removing that because I have no idea what it is. Um, give us a moment to compile. I didn't think it would take this long. Alrighty, there we go. That's gone. Uh, so yeah, if you are worried about any errors, you can just enter play mode and give it a minute to load. And if play mode opens just fine, then you are good to go. In this case, now that you've got your ABI CCK in, you can go to the Alpha Blend Interactive at the top and import the control panel. The control panel I would recommend docking on the side here. I've got it docked here, but you can dock it pretty much anywhere. I don't really, it doesn't matter, you can dock it here if you want, or 
there. Doesn't matter, I've just got it here because that's my personal location of putting things. As a note, I forgot to record this in the middle, so I'm just gonna slot this in in post, but uh, for those who imported the CCK, it may not be logged in like this, uh, unless you've already done this before. So if you are not logged in, the login system is ver like, rather simple. So what you need to do is go online, go to the um, hub.ab interactive uh, interactive dot net and here you'll probably be sent to the dashboard or login page you may already be logged in from here you want to go to your account here you want to go to your settings here and go down to your ABI content creation kit master key you want to copy this and then once you've copied it you can close that but you don't need it anymore and then in here you on the login thing you'll have to put in your username and paste in your key. Once you've pasted in your key and you've got your username correct, it should just bring you straight to what you see here, minus the avatar here, unless you've got the avatar script on your avatar. Once you have the CCK imported and there's no issues, you can then get to importing your avatar. So in this case, it's going to be Chiffon. So I'm going to grab the files for her and import those first. And then I'm going to use the Unity package because I know it's got broken scripts on it. The reason I want to import the Unity package with the broken scripts is because that is the like most likely case uh, for the majority of people's avatars when they bring them here. Most of them will have broken or missing scripts because of the VRChat uh, SDK. So generally it'll just be the exactly as I'm doing here. So I'm just going to skip ahead again to let this import. Uh, instead of wasting time, so I will be right back. Okay, all my assets have now been imported and ready to go. I've imported the Unity package as well, but generally after you've done the CCK stuff, all the Unity packages are exactly the same, you just import them, accept, uh, check the files and things, make sure nothing's getting overwritten, and you're good to go. So, now that everything's imported, everything is ready to be done. So, first I'm going to go to the broken script version, which is in here, and I'm going to import this. All of the avatars that you port may look like this when you bring them over, but that is fine, do not worry. Um, you may have errors in here from importing Poyomi, for example, which I'm going to do in a second. Um, but first of all, what you want to do is make sure you have no missing scripts. So instead of missing, like removing your missing scripts this way, you can remove them by just adding the CVR avatar component to your avatar. This is what you'll use to upload your avatar to the platform, so it's best to get this on as soon as possible just to get it out of the way. You can also auto adjust the view position and mouth position just to set them up for now, but you will be adjusting this later just to tweak it perfectly. Once you've got your avatar script on, however, you want to go to the CCK control panel that you docked earlier, and you will notice that it says remove missing scripts. You want to click this and have the CCK remove the missing scripts from the avatar, and I think it's also removed it from this one, let's just double check. Um, yes, so this one's also been removed. Once you've got all the things set up, you are ready for the next step, which is to import your shaders. So in this case, I have working Poyomi shaders. You may have broken shaders from VRChat because we do use a new set, uh, like shader system compared to VRChat. So instead of using single pass shading, we use single pass instanced shading. The latest versions of Poyomi start using this, I think uh, post Poyomi 7. So if you have Poyomi shaders after version 7, they will work on Charlotte VR just fine. Though other shaders may have problems, so I would definitely ask in the Alpha Blend Interactive Discord, which I will also link in the description, and ask in the shaders channel for any help with that. Though for now though, I know Poyomi works, so I'm going to put Poyomi shaders into my assets here. I'm going to skip ahead again, because this will take a long time, because I know how big Poyomi is, so I will see you in just a moment. Alright, so Poyomi shaders, when it imports, will more, like, more often than not, it will ask this right here. You want to click yes for these and other files that may be found later. This is because some scripts have API calls that have changed or may be outdated, so it's best to use this uh, function here, so it will automatically update your API calls and just fix your scripts. Uh, this might take a little bit again, so I'm going to just ignore the uh, the wait time by just skipping, so 
uh, you don't have to wait as long. Okay, so Poyomi has finally imported. You may notice when it imports that it has a lot of errors. These can be politely skipped because they just happen with Poyomi, I don't know why. If you are worried, you can try and enter play mode again just to see if it's fine. And more often than not, it was just Poyomi being Poyomi, so that's fine in this instance. Now we can get on to the material repair part of the project, which is going to the materials. These most likely already use Poyomi to begin with, so if I go to Poyomi and select Poyomi Pro, it should maybe just... Yep, there you go. Just It just works. It'll then apply the shaders correctly, and there you go. We now have Chiffon with working materials imported into the project. From here on, we can now do the next part of the project. So I would recommend first of all what we can do is going to Thry, going to Shader Optimizer, go to Materials List, and just pull this window out. This window won't be able to be saved anywhere, this will have to just keep being uh, grabbed from in there, so remember where it is. But you want to lock all materials, and just let it lock in those materials. This is because it'll optimize the shader, meaning that people won't lag as much while watching the, uh, like, while, while visibly seeing the avatar, basically. Because the last thing you want to do is lag people out when you load, so this is always a good idea to do. Once you've locked in your materials, you are more than happy to close this window. Do note that if you do have animated properties on your materials, like, uh, I don't know, like, the, if you want to change the color of it in the middle, you will have to right-click on this and select Animated When Locked, but if you're not doing anything like I am here, this is more than fine. Do note, though, also that not every shader can lock in like this. It's only, as far as I'm aware, Poyomi, but there are others out there, I'm sure. So, if you can lock in your shaders, I would recommend doing so. Now that you're ready with your materials and you're all ready to go optimization-wise, you are now ready to set up the rest of your avatar. So in this case, I'm going to start off by adjusting the view position slightly, just to make it easier to see when in VR mode. So I'm going to click this little thing here, because you can then force your camera onto a specific direction. And then, by clicking this little thing down here, you can set it to isometric mode, which is like a two-dimensional view, so you can adjust the height slightly if you need, and just perfectly adjust things without moving them in the 3D space. So in this case, that's all I needed to do with this avatar to get the lining up properly, so I'm happy with this result. Now I can go back to this view, and it's more than fine. From here, I'm going to add a face mesh uh, into the thing here, so the face mesh on this is body. So in, what I'm going to do is t uh, click and hold on the like, left mouse button on body, so then you get this dragging motion here, and you're going to drop it in here. That now has the face mesh onto the correct spot. From here you can have eye look movement if you need it, and also set up blink blend shapes. So in this case, give it a minute while I just uh, get it to recognize, there we go. Now that it's recognized that I've got a face mesh, I can set this to VRC Blink, which is this avatar's Blink Blend shape. And now it's ready to get into game with working eyes. From here, we can go to Lip Sync Options. I'm going to be using Visemes for this, but you can use uh, Single Blend Shapes or Jawbones. As far as I'm aware right now, Jawbones cause your avatar to twist into a noodle, so I wouldn't recommend using it. But as far as I'm aware, Visemes and the other one work just fine. In this case, this avatar has Visemes, so I'm going to click Use Lip Sync and click Auto Select Visemes, and all the selected Visemes will go into place. If you need help generating these in the future with an avatar that has bones instead of uh, Visemes for its mouth and things, I will do a tutorial on that later. So do keep tabs on that, because that is going to be a tutorial I'm going to do. Once you've set all this up, however, you are now ready for the next step, which is advanced settings. The only reason you need this is if you want to change the avatar's animations, which I do in the future, so I'm going to just do that here. You want to apply the avatar animator to this slot, so just search ava and you should find it. And now we've got avatar animator in the slot, and you want to also apply the overrides. I would recommend choosing this one here, not that one, for this slot. And then also do it down here as well, 
just to double check that you've got all your overrides set up for when we get into that. There's also slots here for your advanced avatar settings, which I'll get into in another video, but this is just to get your avatar working on Chillout VR. Now that everything here is set up, you are more than ready to upload your avatar to the game in its barebone state. I will show you more advanced things later, but this isn't the tutorial for that, this is just the tutorial for how to get it on the game in the first place. Once you've got it like this, and you followed all the steps perfectly, you can now move to CCK Control Panel. If there's another pop-up here that says something about blend shapes using something legacy or whatever, and it wants you to change it, just accept it. The CCK will always tell you if there's something wrong, and it'll most times out of 10 have a button to automatically fix it for you. So in this case, there's nothing here, there's only stuff about skin mesh renderers, but that doesn't prevent you from uploading, and generally it won't cause too much performance issues anyway, so I'm going to click Upload Avatar. From here, it's going to compile everything into a bundle, and it's going to get ready to upload. So I'm going to skip this process, and I'll be back with you once it's finished. Okay, the avatar is now on the uploading stage. From here, you're going to have to discern what tags your avatar falls under, if you have loud spawn audio, or audio that goes a long distance, you want to tag that. If your avatar has music that's copyrighted, you want to contain that. If you have flashing lights, colors, bright lights, screen effects, or particle systems, you definitely want to tag those. Same with the rest here. And especially if your avatar has suggestive content or it's got nudity on it, you need to tag this so it will fall under the Mature Content Access DLC for this one in particular, and I think also Violence is another one that uh, is under the Mature Content Access as well. Uh, I think Gore is as well. So these three here, I'm going to uh, try and put something over them in post-processing. Those three right here are the ones that will be under Mature Content Access. So if your avatar falls under any of those categories, you must tag those. In this case though, this avatar only has a bathing suit type thing, so it's going to fall under Suggestive, because I will be able to add future toggles for that, uh, so it's going to have a Suggestive tag for that reason. Other than that, this avatar is fine at this moment in time, but in the future, with stuff I may add, it may contain music or other things, so I'll tag that in the future when needed. It is also a good note to over-tag your item instead of under-tag, so if there is something you're not quite sure, but you think you might need to tag it, it's recommended to just tag it anyway, because you can advance tag stuff later, which I will show in another video. But since I'm not showing that, we're gonna move on. From here, you can name your avatar, so I'm gonna name it Ali Chiffon. Uh, I'm not going to give it a description, but you can give it a description if you so desire. You can even put in a change log, because in the future, you're going to be able to basically use older versions of things. The game's going to have a system in which you can use new and old bundles, depending on which one you want. So, the change log is part of that system. I don't know if this will change in the future, but it's a future plan that I've heard of, and I don't know if their plans have changed. Also, when it comes to uploading an image, it's actually a lot easier to upload an image than you think here. Instead of making a plane like you do in VRChat and taking a picture of that, here you can directly upload from your folder here. So in this case, I've got an image here from the avatar that was provided already, so I'm going to select that and click open. It'll then open that image, and so long as it's in a 1 by 1 aspect ratio, so in this case that's probably 248 by 248, uh, two not 248, 2048 by 2048, um, it'll work just fine. Any other aspect ratios will work, they just will get distorted, so do be aware of that. But since this is fine, I can now move to the next step. The next step is just your legal ownership uh, stuff, and also the fact that you've correctly tagged it. So here, you would basically just say that you have, uh, you own the content, or it's licensed to you, uh, uploading content without copyright, uh, copyrighted owner's permission, etc. can get your account taken off, and also have legal issues. So, generally the whole thing here is, uh, do I have ownership of what I'm uploading, and or do I have the li or am I within the license usage? So, in this case, with the Chiffon, I've bought it off of Booth, so I own this asset. And the next one is the legal assurance for tagging. This uh, is 
Well, it's not exactly a legal thing, it's more of just people wanting to have the correct tags. Specifically, uh, like if you have screen space, for example, people do not like seeing screen space, so they want it to remove from like certain avatars, they can hide it and it'll be tagged correctly. So in this case, since the avatar is just suggestive, like I mentioned earlier, this is fine, you can tag, uh, you've, you've tagged this correctly, so you can move on. Now it's going to upload, this won't take very long, it might take long depending on the size of your avatar, and just like that, my avatar's been encrypted and ready to upload to the platform. So now if I were to start up Chill Out VR, this avatar will work just fine. I will show you how this avatar looks in game, so for this I'm just going to go chill out VR, uh, it's going to load, I've got Melon Loader and all the other fancy mods, so this might take a little while, so I'm going to skip this again, um, so give this a hot minute and I will be right back with you. Okay, so I am now inside chill out VR, I'm in my Forge world, and I'm in my main avatar that I'm actually going to be changing eventually, but in this case, this is what I came here for, my avatar. It should be under the My Avatar section if you've uploaded it correctly. And once you click into here, it should load perfectly fine. Here you go. And just like that, the avatar works just fine. And the arms can move, The everything is set up correctly. And it works just as intended. And I'm happy with its current result. This eye thing is something that happens sometimes, don't question it, it's just a weird thing with the uh, the game, but generally though, this avatar is fine uh, for what it is. So I'm going to leave this basic avatar tutorial off here, if you have any questions or uh, anything that you need to have answered, I'm more than happy to answer it in Discord, uh, my Discord server will be linked in the description where you can find me, uh, as well as the Chill Out VR Discord where you can ask other people if I don't know a specific thing, because I'm not perfect, I don't know everything about the CCK, I'm still relatively new, even though I've still been here for two years, I'm still learning stuff all the time. So generally though, this is the uh, final part of this tutorial, I hope you had a nice time following this, I hope it was easy for you. And I will see you in my next tutorial where I'm going to be working on the advanced avatar settings and also just the tagging system in general. So I'll see you in the next video. I hope you're having a wonderful time wherever you may be. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.